As many undoubtedly are aware, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is presently involved in a discussion on the issue of women's ordination to pastoral leadership. Uh, many within the Seventh-day Adventist Church actually believe that there is no connection between the issue of women's ordination and the issue of gay marriage and gay clergy. Well, a recent article in Time Magazine begs to differ. I'm reading now from the January 26, 2015 issue of Time Magazine. I'm reading from an article that is titled, A Change of Heart, and the subtitle reads, Inside the Evangelical War Over Gay Marriage. The article is written by Elizabeth Diaz. I'm not much aware of her religious affiliation, but this is a secular magazine, and the article is presented from a secular focus. And so I would like to read a few statements from this article that show that clearly out in the world, people are aware that there is a definite connection between the issue of women's ordination to pastoral leadership and the agenda to have gay marriage and gay clergy. I'm reading now from page 47 of this article in Time Magazine. The subtitle is, What is at Stake? And I read, I quote from this article, For many evangelicals, the marriage debate isn't really about marriage or families or sex. It is about the Bible itself, and that makes many evangelicals all the more uncompromising. The roots of the conflict are deeply theological. This is a significant statement, particularly because many in the church today are saying that there really is no theological basis for this discussion, that the issue has to do with ecclesiology and not theology. The author of this article clearly sees that this is a theological issue. I continue reading. This is a uh, once again, Elizabeth Diaz. Evangelical faith prizes the Bible's authority, and that has meant a core commitment to biblical inerrancy, the belief that the words of the Bible are without error. Genesis chapter 1 says God created male and female for one another, and the Apostle Paul calls homosexuality a sin, inerrantists say. And for groups like the Southern Baptist Convention, and it's 50,000 churches nationwide, that is the biblical trump card. In other words, the issue is Scripture. A little bit further down in the article, we find a more explicit reference to the connection between the fight for women's rights and the LGBT agenda. Uh, here is what the author says. And there is another just as fundamental obstacle, when she says obstacle, she's referring to an obstacle for the church to accept uh, gay marriage and gay clergy. She continues writing, so far no Christian tradition has been able to embrace the LGBT community without first changing its views about women. The same reasoning that concludes that homosexuality is sin is also behind the traditional evangelical view that husbands are the spiritual leaders of marriages and men are the leaders of the church. A little bit further down, she quotes Robinson as saying, It is not an accident that women's liberation movement preceded the gay liberation movement. And so there are two points that I would like to emphasize in this particular newsflash. First of all, the author of this article clearly sees that this is a theological issue. And secondly, it is very significant that she sees a connection between the roles of men and women in the church and in the home and the agenda of the LGBT community. As Seventh-day Adventists, we must abide by what Scripture says. Scripture says, Wives, submit to your own husbands. Husbands, love your wives. And Scripture also states that elders and bishops must be the husbands of one wife. 
Let us live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let's not allow culture to dictate what the church does. Let's take what God says and apply it in our church.